This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, we're back to another one. Yep, it's a Generac Honeywell. So it says on the front, but it's a Generac. It's for an overspeed. So we just had one that happened on the 23rd. Today is the 25th. He reset it, it ran for a while, be six minutes and it did it again. So that's under the alarm log. Under the alarm log, I mean, that's pretty much about all there is. Over speeds, under voltages, low oil pressure, and that's about it. Go under run log, for the most part, looks like. It's been losing power here and there, but it's been running. Let's see where we're at, current time. 113, that's off, we can fix that real quick. Don't need to show you how to set the clock, it's pretty brain dead. Saturday at 12 o'clock for exercise, reset maintenance. That's about it for that stuff. We're gonna go ahead and reset the maintenance because it usually ends up creating an issue with telling them there's something wrong. But we'll go ahead and kind of check it over like the maintenance was being done. Hit enter, plus, yes, enter. Okay, let's go to uh, debug. Inputs we have. 236. I'd have to pull up my book to find out what the digital codes are there. I don't have them memorized. Let's see what it does. Uh, slow crank. She's having a hard time. Oh, propane gas here. Last I checked, it should have a vibration adapter in there. That bring that tank in a heartbeat. It tried fighting me. Might have a stepper motor going out on it. Let's take a peeky poo down here. See if it's still plugged in correctly. We might have a motor out. Got to, look at that. Looks like it's all still plugged in. I need to loosen up some of them wires. We'll check the resistance on them, see if that stepper motor's any good. The motor feels free. It just seems like maybe it's not responding like it should. Looks like somebody spilled a little bit of oil down there. I always hate when people do that. I didn't like that battery either. It, it acted like it was a slow cranker. So I think we're going to isolate that and check the battery too. Listen that up. I'm a big proponent for new batteries every four years. That way you know it's going to run. Usually it don't have as many problems. Let's get the checker on that. Now I do know this has nothing to do with the frequency, the uh, engine speed being off. But I believe in looking at it as a whole. So let's go in here, standard accurate test, cold cranking amps. It says it's 560. Pop that up a touch. There we go. Bet she comes in cruddy. Suggested replaced. Not good. Voltage looks high because it just came off the charger. The internal resistance there is 500 mega ohm. Milli ohm, mega ohm. Yeah, mega ohm. Yeah. Uh, cold cranking came in at 181. Yeah, that battery's junk. That's not good. I guarantee you if we put a true load test on there, she'll dive. 
We'll do a double check that way. So we're right on the very top there, nice and tight. We got pretty good pinch on the negative there. Let's watch that meter there. And she dropped down to 10. There's about nine. Let's let off of it, do it again. Yeah, whoa, that really dropped down bad. Let's make sure we got a really good connection. You don't want to hold it more than 10 seconds. Let's watch it one more time. And yeah, she's dropping to 10. Usually it bounces up real quick. Yep, it's not even recovering normal. So yeah, the battery's, the battery's going to, to pot. So we're gonna need to get that replaced. Let's check the resistance of that little motor. I grabbed my Fluke 87. <clears throat> Some people didn't understand what I was saying when I said that, you know, my Fluke, I mean, hello, if I didn't think my meter was good, I wouldn't own it. The 902, nothing wrong with it, it just isn't as accurate. It, the resistance doesn't go very high, things like that. And the probes I've got on it sometimes aren't real great for getting into tight spots. Uh, plus this one's got a lot of other attachments, so just I kind of recommend a, more of a bench style or a square style like this. They usually have more more ranges and things like that on it. So let's get in here and see if our resistances are pretty much the same. I'm going to have to pull it up off my phone because I don't remember if black was our common. I know they should all be the same resistance. I don't work on these every day, but lately I've been doing a lot of them. I used to work on them a lot, where I was at before, so, you know, if you do it every day, and that's all you do, then God bless you. I, on the other hand, work on everything under the sun. So, I am not as good at these as somebody that does it every day. That's just a given. But I'm proficient. Yep, that's about as... Well, as least as you're gonna get that. Okay, let's we'll see what we get here. All right, our resistance is red is your common, going to orange, yellow, black, and brown. Should be 10 to 11 ohms. All right, so checking out my meter zeroed out. We have 0.2 ohms. Let's go. There we go. Red to the first one, 12.4 ohms. On to the next one, 12.4 ohms. Going to the next one, 12.4. Going to the next one, 12.5. I'm gonna say the motor's probably fine. Let's go ahead and put this back together. And we'll start it up and we're gonna watch it and see if it goes sweeping motion back and forth. Okay, so we've got that back on there. We've got the battery uh, hooked up to the meter with 13.1. Let's, uh, watch and see what happens when we turn this thing to manual well first of all we've got to put it to off because we got that code we're gonna hit enter that clears it now let's watch and see what happens when we hit the go button hold in So it's going back and forth. It's almost like it's not paying attention. Like the controller might be a little wacko. Yeah. It feels like the gears are working. I don't feel no binding or anything like that. Feels pretty normal. I should take a look at this oil, make sure it's okay. Should have done that first thing, and usually I do if you watch my other videos. Yeah, it's about out. It's nice. People don't realize these are air cooled and they eat up oil. You can see the oil down there. I don't know if that's from spilling it. I mean, you can see that it's on the freaking hands. Yeah, you never know if it's spilt or if it's actually leaking. It's kind of difficult sometimes. 
none of these ever get any real usage. Yeah, that's pretty much out of oil. So when we go to get the battery, we need to get some oil too while we're at it. Wouldn't be a bad idea, just change the whole thing. Let's go talk to the homeowner and tell him what we got going on. All right, so he said, get it. Let's get it. All right, it looks a little bit better now. We picked up uh, two quarts, only needed about eh, just a little over half a quart. So we're gonna leave that and the extra one here for the customer. A lot of people don't realize that these things are air-cooled, so they use oil up. Uh, if it's liquid-cooled, it wouldn't use as much oil. Um, but we're gonna clean up this mess. He said this happened after a PM, or somebody left a cover off or something something crazy so we're going to clean up this mess and that way you can at least tell if it's something new or old or what probably ain't going to be able to tell today but at least we're making an attempt to make it right yeah this thing doesn't feel like it's been ran a whole lot chances are it, even though it's got 140 hours this thing's probably had the oil changed three times and it's probably not had any real uh hours on it at all but that's here nor there. So let's get this battery in here. I can do a quick check on it too while we're at it. All right, on the 510 cold cranking, which is just a touch under what it's technically rated at, came in right at 511. And so the internal resistance 5.4 milliohm. Got the battery hooked back up. Everything's cleaned up down there. Caps and stuff are all in tight. Let's run this thing, see what we get. We'll get this set up so we can check the frequency and stuff with it while it's running. Here we go. Cranks a little faster. Still high RPM. You can tell it is. At least it sounds like it is. Our resistance is within one ohm and they're all equal so I'm gonna say it's something in the wiring for that part uh, I the only thing left is the module there just ain't a whole lot you can do with it there so I'm gonna double check with the factory but that's where it's leaning towards with me unless we got a, a choke or something sticking here which don't look like it is Let's watch that and see what it does okay. had somebody message down in the comments of another video and says I'm an idiot because they don't have chokes on gas you know natural gas and propane what do you go against diesel well that right there my friend is a choke you're choking it no no fuel no uh, no air so you're choking it choke 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 <sighs> yeah I mean unless that servo is just I mean, it's not even trying to adjust. It's just staying there. All right, so what I found out is when we unhook the filter, the frequency goes normal. I ran it with one cylinder on the front, one on the back. I checked my gap in here, see what kind of spark I was getting. I got every bit of 10,000. The front was getting 15,000. The rear barely could get maybe 12,000. So I've got a pretty strong spark. I'm gonna pull these spark plugs out and look at them real quick. Uh, it's just really wacko that it decides to work like that. I did check all down in here to see if there's any air leakages. I checked the gas pressure. We're at uh, 12 inches. It ran steady at that, but it just kept still when it was all back together. It was acting dumb and wanting to do 65, 67 hertz. Uh, one time it even went up to 70. But with it like this, it runs fine, which is totally screwballed. We're going to yank those plugs out. All right, so... Good old engine issues as usual. Get some oil on there on that one. That looks like crap. Unbelievable. You've already got oil back here and stuff. I wonder, are we leaking somewhere else or did we really blow it off? Let's check our compression, see what we got here. Let's go ahead and kill the fuel. Yep. Okay, let's see what we got here. <laughs> 
150 pounds. That sucks. Usually it's 190 or better, I thought, but I could be wrong. Maybe it's 145. Okay, let's check our front here. It's over 30 pounds differential. Barely hit 150 on the one, so we've got another one with our rears all jacked. So we're going to go ahead and check the valves here, see how they are. This happens way too often to not be a problem. 100 and some odd hours. So pop it and do a valve check on it, see what we got. Everybody talks about, set the valves, set the valves, set the valves. Half the time it's never the valves. So we'll, we'll do a pressurization of it and we'll find out if it's leaking through the rings or what the hell's going on with it. Chances are it's probably the freaking rings. It's happened more than once. Our valve clearance there should be 0 0.002 to 0 0.004. So here is four, there's three. I've made some adjustments here to it. Four kind of hits. Three, I can slide it right through there. Same side with this one here. Well, could earlier. 0 0.03, slides right through there. Same thing here, slides through. Here's 0.04, that goes right through no problem, which is a little too much. That one just hits. So this one here, I'm gonna cheat. You're not supposed to do it like this. Kind of give it a little wiggle. Four hits, so 0.03. Goes through, no problem. All right, let's go ahead and check our compression on that cylinder and see how it is. I guarantee it probably won't make a damn bit of difference. This is the reason why I don't screw with this. So we went top dead center there. That's how we got it. Down, up, down, up, boom, compression stroke up. Okay, there's that. There we go. All right, fuel's off. Let's go ahead and crank it over. Hopefully everything don't fall leave the cover off so we can play with it some more but here we go ready still 150 that's the reason why I don't screw around with valve adjustments because usually don't do you no good so anyhow uh, I think what we got here is a but we're gonna have a ring issue here uh, done this before and I think the last one was bad on the back too uh, so we can go ahead and do a uh, blowdown test on it and see what we get and we can see where it's leaking at. Front, rear, top, bottom. I haven't tried this setup with this new regulator I've got here. It may not work right with it, but with a traditional regulator it has worked in the past. Uh, what I usually do is we've got this one here. Unfortunately, like you say, you can't, you can't just set it wherever you want it at. Okay, yeah, it should work out. So we crank it up. Sometimes they tell you to go 90. The guy that did our class told us to go go 100. So, and you wanna set your, go to set there. So yeah, it may not, this may not work very good. You wanna just zero out our gauge there. Yeah, this regulator may not work very good. All right, let's go ahead and hook it up and see what we get. There we go. Oh, wow. Another junk set of rings. Or the valves, one or the other. But yeah, it's either way, it's nothing I'm gonna fix. I, we don't tear engines apart. So they can either buy a new engine or have a small engine mechanic redo it. Uh, I'm an HVAC and refrigeration guy, not a small engine guy. I can work on them, but that's not what I specialize in. And you, when you start getting into all these other different things, that's when you become not good at it. So either way, like I said, it worked better the last time, but like I said, it's, see, that can happen. That's when you ain't perfectly dead center and then it'll do that, but. I should have went slower, but either way, it was leaking pretty bad. It shouldn't have done that. I'll do it one more time here, make sure we're top dead center. Yeah, I think we're in there. Now, some guys, they can get in there with a wrench. Get on the engine front piece there. You gotta take off that screen on the front. Maybe that would be easier. I've always just done it from here. 
There. That right there is about up, down, up, down. So you gotta be right perfectly in the middle there. I usually push down really hard on it to try to know that I'm there. You can tear it apart and replace whatever, but like I said, that's just not what we do. All right, I put the valve cover gasket back on, see if that helps distinguish if it's coming from the intake, exhaust, or through the, through the piston rings. That is a little easier to tell. Yeah, I can hear it through the intake. Don't hear it down there. I can check it. Not, uh, like I said, I can hear it through there. I don't hear it over here too much. Mainly hear it up there. Yeah. Although, you know, they, they tell you in the book to go to 90. And although I'm not holding 90, it's still, I got some problems there. I don't carry an air compressor in my truck. It's, once again, I'm not an auto mechanic. Uh, just uh, the problem is electricians don't want to learn this thing because they're not a mechanic either. And uh, or that since we're very technical minded, the, the HVAC guys usually do it. Piss you off or whatever, it's just the way it is. At least around here. So, there you go. Either way, you're either gonna have to call a small engine mechanic. Um, but there ain't a whole lot I can do with it. Uh, we got the gapping on the spark plugs. It was close. Uh, 30 thousandths is what they want on that. Uh, we are perfectly at three, uh, point zero zero three thousandths on the, the uh, valves there. I didn't bother with the front because the rear's failing. Why waste my time for the front? Um, you know, it's uh, trial elimination. Fact is, it shouldn't be making any noise at all. So it escapes through the breather, check piston rings. Escapes through the carburetor, check intake. Take intake valve. Well, either way, there ain't a whole lot I can do with it. So intake valves. Um, that requires you yank the top of the engine off and do whatever else to it. All right, so notice this screw right there was loose. So we're gonna put some Loctite on it and try to adjust it again. It actually came in the area that it needed to, so we're gonna do that, but that still don't make it right, but yeah. it actually works. working perfect now <laughs> so I adjusted that up and gave it a little more room there so it can go slower or faster it kind of has room but yeah it that 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 uh, servo was as far forward as it could go yeah and like I said I could see that wiggling so we got some uh, Loctite on that and I left a little room and it's I can push it forward I can pull it back and it's it's holding right in there at the 60 hertz area which is what it's supposed to do okay. I mean at least I was able to show you firsthand that you know we got some leakage on the intake valve yeah. but if it's running I mean the compression ain't right you can see there's a difference in the spark plug yeah. there's obviously something not quite right with the engine but that comes down to in small engine repair unfortunately but right now it's running so I mean right. you know depending on what you want to do at that point I mean at least well at least maybe they can tell me what it is. All right, we're going to put this back on auto. We're going to hold the fuse on this and make sure it transfers. It should start counting down. Like I said, the biggest thing here was the there was no room for that servo to go forward. We kept the uh, this engine got issues. The engine's got issues. Ain't much more I do about that. You can tell. Not very big wire. So 243. Pulling right in there at 59 hertz, 59.9. Yeah, like I said, uh, we, we got at least running for him, but that's still don't fix the problem with the engine. Does not fix the problem with the engine. Like I said, I'm not an engine guy. They don't cover it in glass, and that's just not my tea. I don't give a I'll do much with that. So, go ahead and make sure this transfers back.
that cover there to kind of have some issues. It's transferred back. There we go. Well, this is one of those ones that just irritates you. That screw, though, it just vibrated down and stopped it from going as far slow as it needed to go. That was that was the big problem, but we caught a lot of other issues here, so it was a lot of hidden things. Well, if you guys enjoy the video and want some more like it, make sure you subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and we'll catch you on the next one. Later.